So, my darling twin sister, how does it feel to finally start our very own company? We did it, Lei. We finally did it! This feels good, doesn't it? I still can't believe it, Lai. I mean, it's awesome to see our hard work come to fruition. But you know, with the economy and all… What were the statistics? Like, 30% of all new startups don't survive past their first year of business? That scares me a little. Nuh uh Don't you bring your negativity here now. <laughs> Need I remind you what my nickname was in high school? The Golden Hand of Midas? Exactly. That was my nickname because I made everything I touched into gold. Like the guy from the Greek myth. Either I have a strong intuition for knowing what will turn out great, or I am just so freakishly talented that I can truly make anything into something great. Honestly, I don't know how you can still let yourself be worried when you are in this with me. Right? Can I get an amen? <laughs> okay, you're right. So, did you tell your boyfriend all about it yet? Did you tell him he is the luckiest SOB in the world for dating you, a future CFO of LL Designs? Greg? No, I haven't told him anything. I didn't think we were at a point yet to be telling people about it. Why not? I would have shoved it in his face ten times by now. Now he won't make condescending comments about you not having gone to college. Which is, like, the most trivial thing to look down on you for, by the way. I can't believe you let him treat you like that. You say it's probably not intentional, but still. Nah, it's fine. I think it's more like he prides himself for having gone to a prestigious school, rather than me not having gone to college at all. Besides, I am so sick of fighting with him. I don't want to bring anything up that might trigger it anymore. I want smooth sailing from here on out. I won't have much time for childish lovers' quarrels anymore, right? I'm the frickin' CFO of LL Designs, aren't I? Heck yes you are, queen! Ugh, you should get rid of him, though. He doesn't deserve you, sis. There are so many other eligible young men your age out there who should be floored to score a chance to date you. I don't know what you see in Greg. I really don't. Even his name is pretentious. Why does he have three G's? <laughs> he didn't name himself, Fly. And he's actually really sweet. He can be stuck up and pretentious sometimes, sure. But I think that was more because of the boarding schools he was sent to and stuff. He probably had to make up a persona to survive the strict school system. Deep inside, I know he is a sweet, caring man. You know how I am. I have weird tastes. <laughs> It still wakes me up at night, fuming, thinking about that dude you dated in high school. You know, the one who used to slap you around? We should have called the cops on him, Lay. We should have reported him and sued him and dragged his ass to prison where he belonged. Not having done that is one of my very few life's regrets. And now you are dating some old man in his mid-thirties? Why? Lila... This is not the time to discuss my choice of bad boyfriends. We have to get to the office and set up the computers for people to start working next week. I already told Greg that I will be spending some time with you over the weekend, but I really don't want to waste any more time dilly-dallying. We need to get this done. You're right, you're right. Okay, I will see you at the office around one. Sounds good. Hey, babe. What are you up to? Are you busy? Hey, boo. No, I just got home. Just now? Oh, shoot. Why so late? What were you doing? You were with your twin sister, right? Yeah, I was. I actually got a job. Whoa, really? That's great, babe. I didn't know you were looking for one. You should have told me. I may have been able to hook you up with something through my network. Nah, no, it's okay. I just got a job with a small startup company. They are just starting out, so they are still a tiny business, but unbelievably busy because of it. This is great, babe. Way to go. What kind of startup is it? If it's brand new, it must be pretty rocky still. I bet it'll take some time for them to figure things out. How's the pay? I can't imagine a startup paying you more than the minimum wage, right? 
it's all right. I'm looking forward to growing with this company. It's got its own perks for being a startup. I get to be there from the beginning, be an integral part of the cog, all that cool stuff. I'm excited. Leilani, I've asked you this a million times, but I will ask it again. Are you sure you don't want to go back to school? You could easily get a start at some community college and transfer to a decent university. I can help you through all that. Greg, we've already talked about this. Over and over again. I told you, I will think about college when and if I ever find the need to learn something. I'm pretty content right now. And I really want to earn more money while I have this momentum and save up for the future. I can't even imagine putting everything aside to start school, sitting in a classroom full of people a decade younger than me. I just think you are approaching your point of no return. I think you are approaching it fast. If you don't consider a higher education now, I don't see you getting another opportunity to pursue it again. I'm only thinking of what is best for you. Trust me, I went to Yale. The higher the education, the better the salary in the end. I am living proof of that, babe. What other regional office manager makes almost six figures? I get where you are coming from. And I have so much respect and admiration for you for having gone to an Ivy League school. But in this day and age, a college degree is no longer a ticket to success. If anything, it's a gamble. I know tons of people who went to a decent college, only to graduate and work at a coffee shop while high school dropouts like me making millions by investing in cryptocurrency or real estate. I'm not saying the former is bad, but I'm just saying their education didn't get them to where you probably think they should have gotten. Do you know what I mean? I'm okay with where I am right now. I need you to be okay for me too. Whatever. It's my fault for bringing this up again. I can't ever seem to get across to you. So anyway, what kind of startup is it? Your new job, I mean. It does graphic designs and some video editing services. We are going to branch out to YouTube and Instagram and all those platforms once we are a bit more settled in. Yikes. I have not heard of any recent startups getting anywhere with online media stuff. I guess you can't start a business without dreaming big though, huh? So, how much do you get paid? Is it really minimum wage? No, it's a bit more than that. I think I can swing somewhere between 2 and 3k per month. Wow, that's barely more than minimum wage. And with your plans to save up, how much will you have left to even spend? Babe, you won't save up enough to buy a car in any less than 10 years. What do you say? Should we just go ahead and get married now? If we combine our salaries, we can live pretty comfortably. Aw, Greg. I love the sentiment, but we can't do that. I am just now getting my first stable job. I can't suddenly start thinking about a wedding. No, I need to get on my own two feet for us before considering anything like that. Not that I don't love you, of course. You know that. I know, I know. I'm still going to think about it seriously, though. I think you and I can really make it work. I think so too, Greg. We can revisit this later, okay? Greg, I'm off now. I finished all my work for the day with time to spare. I am on fire! Wow, good job, babe. I wasn't expecting you to be done until 7 at the earliest. I had all this nervous energy all day. I went and bought a nice fruit basket and a great bottle of wine. It came highly recommended by Wine Country 2022. What if your parents don't like me? What if they don't approve of us? Gah, I'm so nervous! You didn't have to go through all that trouble, babe. I'm sure they would have been happy to meet you without any gifts. I'm getting on the elevator now. Coming down. Where are you? Are you nearby? Yes, I'm near exit 8. You know where the Korean barbecue place is? I'm in that building. Okay. I will see you soon. Hey, babe. Did you get home okay? I hope you weren't too put off by my mom earlier. I'm sure she didn't mean for anything to come out wrong or mean if it did. Hey, yeah, I just got home. It was a long trip because it was pretty late. But yeah, I mean, I understand where your mom is coming from. You are her son. Of course she is going to be wary of anyone you bring and introduce to her as your girlfriend. I understand it. But still, 
I don't feel great about the way she treated me the whole time I was there. Oh, come on, babe. This is so not like you. You are always super fun and easygoing. You are the master of laughing off uncomfortable situations. Just think of it as my mom in her old age, having tried to break the tension between you two. Don't let anything she said bring you down. She was probably joking for the most part anyway. Don't take her too seriously, babe. Maybe you are right. I guess I was too nervous to realize what was going on for real. And now I think I am starting to crash. I should go to bed now. I'll message you again tomorrow? Good night, Greg. Good night, babe. I am back. Finally. Did you miss me? Lila! Oh man, am I happy to see your text again. I missed you so much. I bet. I bet you thought you were going to crumple into a pile of mess in my absence. How did you survive? No, it wasn't too bad. I managed all right, I think. But enough about me. How was your trip? Ugh, I underestimated the whole thing. Who would have thought a CEO's under 35 business strategy seminar and workshop would be so cutthroat? It was not easy breezy at all like I expected. But I did learn a lot. I wish you could have come with me, sis. I wish I could too. But we couldn't leave the company to run itself, right? Besides, I'm sure your position needed more of that seminar than someone in my position. I can tell you all about it when I see you on Monday. So, how was the meeting with Greg's parents? What are they like? Did they seem nice? What did they say to you? I bet they asked you a million questions, huh? Did it feel like police interrogation? <laughs> uh, don't even bring that up. I'm still pretty bummed out from it. And it's been three days. What? Why are you bummed out? What happened? Oh, it's probably nothing. Greg told me not to pay too much attention. I don't know. It's just that... I got a great feeling from Greg's dad. He seemed like a quiet, wise type. I liked him, and I think he liked me too. But I didn't get a good vibe from Greg's mom. She gave me one of those head-to-toe scanning looks when I walked in, and kept asking me questions without really listening for an answer. Stuff like that. It felt like I was being hazed by a teenage clique at some summer camp. Dang, that sounds rough. Wasn't it the first time you ever went to see them? You hadn't met them before, right? And from the get-go, his mom was standoffish like that? That's a bit rude, don't you think? It was the first time I met them, yes. I guess she had heard from Greg that I never went to college, or that I don't come from an average middle-class family. I don't think she likes my background, so to speak. <laughs> what the hell? And, you know, it's not like I expected them to prepare a feast for my visit or anything. But they ordered pizza! There were two pizzas. One cheese and one pepperoni. Both of them still in their boxes on the kitchen island. And so we all had to stand around waiting for our turn to pick up a paper plate and grab a couple slices before sitting down at their table. It was weird. I mean, they invited me over. I was so glad I thought to bring a bottle of wine because all they had to drink was water or milk. <laughs> they do realize that you aren't just some girl coming over to play with Greg, right? I mean, you are going to be their daughter-in-law? How can they think ordering pizza was enough? Or appropriate at all, for that matter. Yeah, it was weird. And when I handed over the wine I had brought, they didn't even offer to pour me a glass. So I had to ask for it. It was like I stepped into a whole other world. I mean, I didn't grow up knowing what was normal and what wasn't, but I definitely knew something wasn't right with this family. What else? Was there anything else weird that happened? Not much. Except Greg's mom asked me to help cut some fruits. She said that fruits are a luxury in some countries and that they need to be cut and presented beautifully. She tried to make me cut a banana up into slices and place them on a plate in concentric circles. That is messed up. Who do they think they are? Do you really have to go through with this wedding? Is Greg the absolute right one for you? Are you sure about this? I think I'm going to think about it. Maybe give them one more chance to see if the other night was a fluke, and they were also as nervous as I was, or something. Maybe they had every intention of making me feel welcomed, and it was just that they were way off. You know? 
Yeah, I think you need to think real long and hard about it. I'd hate for you to make a rash decision and pay dearly for the rest of your life. I have had the worst headache because of this. Ugh. Anyway, when do you think you will be getting home? I'm just getting to the baggage claim now. I will get on the next available shuttle once I'm out of the security area. Hey, babe. My mom is asking me to tell you she wants you over this Saturday. She wants to have some dinner and talk about the wedding preparations and all that. Pretty exciting stuff, huh? What do you say? This Saturday? Oof, I'm not sure if I can make it. I am swamped at work. My mom says it needs to be this Saturday. Are you scheduled to work on the weekend again? What kind of a sick company does that to its employees? Who did they think they are? Amazon? Can't you tell them you have an important dinner? Surely they'll let you eat, right? It has to be this Saturday. That's what it sounded like. Come on, babe. It's not just any dinner. This dinner is for us all to get together and talk about our wedding. I'd be canceling a previous engagement if I were you. This is that important. Okay, okay. I will see what I can swing. Great. So I will let my mom know that you are coming then? Okay, sure. Hello, Leilani dear. I wonder if you made it home all right. I couldn't help but notice how unhappy you looked the whole time. Hi, Mrs. Wells. Yes, I made it back home. I was just about to message Greg. You really wear your heart on your sleeve, don't you? Were you never taught to respect your elders, dear? You are in your late 20s. You are a grown woman. You should know that there is a time and a place to show your true feelings so blatantly. I don't know what you are talking about, Mrs. Wells. I wasn't upset or unhappy at all. What made you think I was? And what does any of this have to do with my age? <laughs> this is precisely what I am talking about. I am trying to give you friendly advice. And look at you, about to bite my head off. Oh, never you mind. So, what do you think you can contribute to the wedding? I doubt you can do very much. I asked you earlier at dinner, but you either didn't hear me or avoided the question altogether. I should probably talk to Greg about that more in detail. But as of now, I think he and I are going to pay for the wedding 50-50. We don't need a giant extravagant wedding, so we will probably opt for something intimate. Well, I was thinking you should help out with renovating Greg's house. You know, so you two can move in after the wedding. It's a bit outdated, and so I thought it would be nice to change things up and make it feel like a new house for a new start. That way, you don't have to go through the trouble of buying a whole new house for you two. Hmm, you want me to pay for Greg's house to be renovated? His two-bedroom condo? That's right. I know it's customary for the bride's family to pay for the entire wedding, but since I know you don't have living parents, I don't expect anything like that. I'm sure you are relieved to hear that I am not expecting you to pay for your own wedding either, aren't you? A renovation will only cost about 100k at most. That's not a bad deal, is it? Surely you can make that happen. After all, you are the one set to benefit a whole lot more by marrying up. That's a bit steep. I wasn't expecting the wedding to cost a tenth of that. Not even. I think I could furnish Greg's house if you want us to move in there after the wedding. I am honestly not quite comfortable with the renovation idea. In fact, I don't even know I want to move into Greg's house once we are married. Why can't he move in with me? 100k is not that much money, dear. Especially if you want to marry up the social ladder. What did you think you would be doing? Have Greg pay for everything forever? Other brides gift their future in-laws with designer brand handbags and watches and cars. I don't expect that from you, but I still need to see some kind of initiative on your part. You must not be well-versed in these things because you don't have parents to teach you about it all. Thank God for me, am I right? Don't you think so, dear? You're right, Mrs. Walls. I'm sorry I am a poor orphan nobody that can't afford to make your dreams for my wedding come true. Now, now, there is no need to be passive-aggressive. You have no family, no education, and no savings. 
but I never thought you would have no shame either. You are like a street rat, doing everything and anything just to get by. Do you have anything of value to bring into the marriage with my Greg? Or do you fully expect Greg to be your ticket out of the slums that you are dying to escape from? Uh, who am I kidding? It doesn't matter. You can have children though, yes? There is nothing wrong with you... physically. Down there. What? Are you seriously asking me what I think you're asking? I wasn't trying to be vague, dear. I need to know if you can at least provide my son a few children. After all, this is all you are good for, it seems. You are a virgin, aren't you? I will not have my son settle down to start a family with some tramp carrying God knows what disease. I know young people these days don't think much of protecting their purity. Lord help us. All I ask is that you at least have a couple babies right away after you are married. I am not getting married to be a baby-making machine, Mrs. Walls. To be quite frank with you, I am not sure if I even want to have kids, even. Greg knows this about me, too. That is absolute nonsense. Of course you need to have kids. What is the point of Greg marrying someone like you if not to have kids? That is the whole point of any marriage. Ask anyone. Why do you think people go through the trouble and spend a fortune on adopting or surrogacy or IVF treatments? Even if they physically cannot have children, they still want to create a family. Oh, lordy. I know Greg is dead set on marrying you, but I can't for the life of me understand why. He is plunging himself into darkness, that boy. Bless his heart. <laughs> plunging himself into darkness, you say? Oh, you have no idea, Mrs. Walls. I will show you darkness. Just you wait and see. I thought something like this might happen, so I'm so glad I kept all this under wraps. But here's the big reveal, guys! LL Designs has been named the fastest growing and most profitable startup of 2022. What is all this? Why does that business license have your name on it? I thought you were working for a startup. I told you you should have said something. No, maybe you are right. Maybe you dodged a bullet by keeping it a secret. We are the startup, fools! Thank you, Lila. This feels right. Yes, it's true. Lila and I started a company called LL Designs, and we are now off the charts in every aspect you can think of. Are you surprised that an uneducated orphan street rat like me made a name for myself? That's what you called me, right, Mrs. Walls? A street rat? How does it feel to know that the street rat you so blatantly insulted is actually the CFO of a multi-million dollar industry? Do you feel big and strong? Do you feel mighty? So what, your company got awarded some startup encouragement prizes? I bet it's like trophies in school where you get one just for participating. You might be getting way ahead of yourself there, Lay. Pump the brakes before you embarrass yourself. <laughs> you are saying? You see all these titans of industry lining up to sign contracts with us? Whoa. Those look pretty real. I'm so glad I found out your real feelings toward me before we signed the wedding papers. You and your mom, both of you, were going to treat me like a second-class citizen in the Wells family. Treating me like I am nothing but a baby-making milk machine. Because without a proper education, that is all I am good for, you thought. Right? Wrong. Absolutely, positively, disgustingly wrong. Leilani, dear, are you saying that you, you make a lot of money? More than my Greg? How much more are we talking here? Twice as much? Three times? <laughs> Not even close, lady. Lady? Yes, lady. You are no longer my future mother-in-law. In fact, you are no longer anything to me except someone who has been nothing but rude and mean to me. Try 20 times what Greg makes. Which, by the way, didn't you tell me you work for Google? Isn't that what you told me, Greg? Well, you did an excellent job keeping up the pretenses. 
every time I went to Google headquarters to meet up with you, you managed to pretend like you were coming out of the building. How did you manage that? Your real job with the printer sales company is at least four blocks away from Google. Did you run? I mean, of course you don't work for Google because you also lied about your college, too. You didn't go to Yale. You went to Yonkers Academic League of Education, who call themselves the Yales. That is messed up, Greg. What does that name even mean? Well, I never said I went to Yale University. I distinctly remember saying I went to an institution they like to call Yale. How is that a lie? Besides, it's still a full-fledged four-year university. There is no comparison between my degree and your high school dropout status. Yeah, you got me, Greg. You must be so proud to be a Yale alumnus. Anyway, Georgia, now that I am no longer planning on marrying your garbage son, I hope you can go and find a daughter-in-law who is willing to get you all that crap you tried to extort from me. You know, the handbags and the cars and the watches. And I pray to God that the new girl isn't against reproducing with a loser like Greg. I'm sure there are tons of fish in the sea that want nothing but a slightly bigger fish like him, right? My twin is not someone you should have walked all over. I hope you realize how amazing she is and regret for the rest of your miserable lives how you let her slip away through your fingers. Leilani, wait, wait, let me explain. Let's talk about this. The company that me and my twin sister Lila started together with big hopes and a bigger ambition actually became a gigantic success. I never dreamed that making one great app could push us over the edge of being a rising star startup to a mega successful conglomerate sharing a seat at the table with other huge corporations. I still can't quite believe the turn of events that led me to be here as a single, happy, millionaire CFO. Of course, upon finding out about my position and sudden wealth, Greg and his greedy mom tried everything they could think of to win me back. They tried to ambush me on my way home after work. They sent me flowers and emails and gift baskets and threatening letters too. They truly did everything and anything they could. Quite like a street rat, don't you think? It's funny how the tables have turned, and so drastically at that. Since their true intentions were revealed to me, it was difficult to not cut them off without feeling sentimental. I did, however, take the only one useful piece of advice Greg ever had the sense to give me and enrolled myself in a community college. I am starting a night school course next week to study business management, commerce statistics, and economics. It will make me twice as busy to carry on my duties as CFO while studying towards an MBA, but I am still young and it will all be well worth it in the end. I love my job and I love my twin sister. They are the family I need. Every day, I look forward to going into work where education, upbringing, or any background elements matter. And I am able to be me, the CFO of LL Designs Co. Thank you for watching. We hope you enjoyed the video. Please don't forget to like and subscribe.